Come on, Rangers. Come on, Rangers. We missed the whole game. In the heart of the town of Dorking, fans of the Wanderers are on edge. A chaotic season that see Mark White's side decimated by injury, underperform in the league, exit the FA Cup and recover to lead a charge to the top of the National League South has taken yet another twist. Dorking have dropped points. Two defeats and two draws in their last five games allowed Maidstone to slip into the top spot. Despite taking the lead away to Ebbsfleet, Dorking were instantly pegged back by a neat finish from Rakish Bingham. The stalemates gave Maidstone the chance to extend their lead to four points. Dorking now need to win their remaining seven games and hope that the team on top fail to win at least two. And yet, spirits at Meadowbank remain high. The man in charge is adamant that he neither gets too high nor too low. And that outlook will serve his side well, for the players take him seriously. For this is a man who can strike a moving ball in order to hit a crossbar from 50 yards. <laughs> How do you feel it? Lovely, do my son. Meanwhile, Mark's assistant manager Dino allegedly performed a Trevor Sinclair level bicycle kick volley moments later, but we did not film that. What happened there then? What, what happened, Carl? Jim? Fucking bicey, bicey it. Pop in. Wait, what Dino did? Someone's got bang. Stop in, mate. Right, boys, more professional, please. <laughs> Fuck's sake. What sort of outfit is this? We didn't film Dino's exploits. We were too busy worrying about Mark and wondering why he's coughing so much. I've had a cold, Rich, um, but I'm all right, mate. Everyone's got a cold, haven't they? But I'm back, like Lazarus. No, I'm, I'm um, feeling fine, mate, to be fair. Organised. It uh, feels a long... I'm looking forward to this month because, um, or this period, because there's like almost two games a week now. There's, there's a couple of weekends we get double bankers going to come thick and fast and this time of year you just want to keep playing you have a result on the Saturday we played really well in our last game and you want to just get out there on the Tuesday and play well again it's a, a week's a long time between you know playing matches when you're playing well the results have been up and down over the last month or so like a horse draws yeah but it doesn't feel like performances necessarily happen. I think that's fair to say. Yeah, I'm not really bothered about it. I, if you look at it on paper, it don't look great, to be fair, but the performances have been really good. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased with that. We've, um, we've had to mix and match the team a lot. And even today, the bench um, today is Jason Pryor, David, um, Old Acre, DJ, um, Ed Harris, and uh, Nicky Wheeler. And they're five boys that would get into any team in this league and um, that's because they're not fully fit and that's been the story of our season but you can't just keep trying about it you've got to get on with it I, I, I want us to win the league I think we can I think we can win all our games I think the boys are ready even though we're fragmented I think the boys are ready they play the best football in the league and um, I just have a, a gut feeling we're gonna have a strong finish I don't think you necessarily need to win all your matches to win the league. I think there's going to be twists and turns galore. Seven games is a long time for twists and turns. We hope it doesn't go to Hungford away. There's a significant amount of teams that, that are coming here and changing how they're playing. Because I think you've got to look at it outside in. Outside in, they go, right, they've scored the most goals in the division. They're having a great season. They're dangerous. We know they've got a great squad. Do we really want to play this way? Should we just play, you know, four, five, one, etc.? So not quite sure how they play prepare for either and the boys I'll be honest they look, they're looking good listen if we get beat we get beat but these boys are looking good to be honest they're not, I'm really looking forward to this this phase now that we've got I'm talking to you boys in there as well I'm looking forward to this phase not least because I just feel like we're playing well and I feel like we need matches and there's nothing more annoying than playing as well as we did last week and then you've got to go home and just feel, oh, it was great. And you want to play on the Sunday, you play on the Monday when you play that well. So what we can't afford to do is, we've had some great training sessions. We can't afford to um, 
stop thinking and stop thinking about how good we want to be today. I really want us to have a great week and that means getting three points today. Let everything else take care of itself, but get three points today and then just set that little target of winning all of our games because they're all with this squad and everybody in that room there. Every single game we've got is not just winnable, they're more than winnable. More than winnable, okay? What this lot will do today is work really fucking hard. That is guaranteed. Guaranteed. And what we've got to do is just keep the ball away from them and just be really neat and tidy, okay? So they normally play a diamond. Sorry we haven't got a fucking full-size number 10. But obviously we haven't got enough money in this club to afford fucking good magnets. These other squads around us, will they cope when they're playing two games a weekend? I'm not sure. We've got a great squad, big strength, okay? So the bench today is great. The team that's starting, um, to be honest, if they didn't play a diamond, David, you'd be playing, because I, I don't bullshit, as you know, and I yeah. really fucking rate you highly. But the way we've always beaten these diamonds is to play a, an extra midfielder. So Maka will play <coughs> on that role. So, fucking hell. Mate, look, they're all different sizes, man. This is unbelievable. This is what we're contending with. Uh, where are we now? Moro with um, this kill, yeah? Josh and Wes, off the ball, we've got to pick up, we've got to mark. They're quite mobile. Because they're playing a diamond, they're quite used to covering big space of the ground. Because obviously every week, they're probably one minute trying to get the ball in little wide areas, and next minute they're having to mark. So they're quite used to doing that, but you're the perfect players for that. Maka will play <coughs> that one there. Alfie, really relying upon you with that press, okay? Even at training at one point. I don't think you start there. You probably just start slightly favouring the one you want to have it. We'll let you know when we see the team sheet, but probably the bloke on the left, okay? But realistically, even, even if you started there, whichever one it gives it to, it's, it's nearer for you to press. Got to be really tidy, really tidy. But all, when all else fails, like at Ebb's Fleet, you just put a foot in, you just run faster, and you give more, and you fucking sweat blood, right? And that, we've got all of that in the locker. We've got the skill, and we've got the work rate. So, Moro, remember this, key bits. Moro, fill in the gaps when we use those overloads, okay? Off the, when they've got the ball, man mark that guy, kill, okay? Used to find your men, do a job off the ball. On the ball, lose your men, get in the box. Maka, off the ball, the, 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 the deep line one, on the ball, in the pockets, high, okay? Jimmy and Niall, when you get in good areas, take people fucking on, okay? Bobby and Isaac, leave them to take people on if you think that's a better bet than you overlapping. But if you're looking around thinking the striker's fucking passed me on here, it's a blatant two on one, let them know. Give them a big call. So no, we're two on one, right? Just so we can have a little look, okay? Which is what Baz does brilliantly. Baz is really good at knowing when they've fucking not tracked him. And he just, that's when he gets in the fucking six yard <laughs> box. All right, boys, I've been so impressed. And I'm just looking forward. All I want today is us to play really well. Because I love watching us play. I genuinely, I went home last week thinking, I can't give a fuck we finished bottom of the league. But watching our team and us play the way we do is more satisfying than fucking anything. All right, lads? So these boys need to get fit out there. You lot have got to be ready. We'll do dead balls. All right, boys? Good luck. <laughs> Just say, oh, mate, oh, two years ago, we come back and we come in and we go, keep Right, what's your name and uh, what are you doing here today? Um, I'm Max and I do slouch and own away. Every game? Every game I try to. I've either been playing or since I've stopped playing, I've been, been a physio now. Okay, so when you became a physio, was your goal to get into football? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's the only sport I wanted to get into. Yeah. Oh, that's great, 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 a bit of a challenge. Um, but no, they're a great, great group of guys. Couldn't ask for a better group, really. I first went to Exxon Park in 76 for a, a, a schoolboys game. Um, and then the, 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 the sort of Millwall, Millwall in 82 in the FA Cup, and it just went on and went on and on. 
and now now we're at Arbor Park. Um, I'm home and away every game. Um, my dad's mate um, carried on saying, "Get down the slough." I'm like, "Don't know, watch that um, crap." I guess you could say. Um, but we went down for one Tuesday night game, and you know, it's just a link um, together. And then um, we went to Sutton away in the FA Cup first round. Never looked back since. Buying a pint behind the bar, everything you do, it's good for the club and it's money for the club. And I just feel, I feel needed and appreciated. Um, I'm slowing Arsenal, 50-50 um, I'd say, but yeah. Um, really, 50-50? Yeah, I, I'd say something like that, because not, well, Slough's great. Um, obviously, season ticket prices, you nearly have to remortgage your house, but with Slough, it's, it's all good. Yeah, yeah, I followed Man United for 25, 30 years, all over Europe. Um, got, got, got fed up with it, disillusioned, 60 pounds, sit down, shut up. Slough's my family now. I love it, I'm appreciated. 30 years at United, you leave, no one gives a shit. Expecting from them, um, well, I think we've got the slight chance of a playoffs. Not looking very hopeful. But, mate, um, but yeah, not very hopeful, but I, we always do get a good win against um, good opposition. Dorking half, spoke to Mark during the week. Um, I reckon 3-2 today. Um, I think uh, Aaron Cole in the middle of the park is one of our best players. Big frizzy hair, can't, can't miss him. I'd say he's our best player. Our best games have been playing some of the biggest teams. Right. Um, we beat Maidstone, we beat Ebbsfleet, um, we beat Haven. You know, we, we always seem to pull in big performances against these big teams and we're here to do that again today. I, th I think we've got quite a few injuries. Um, but Slough Town are good at losing to the teams down the bottom. We've done the double over Mason, we've already beaten Dorking. It wouldn't surprise me at all if we got a result here today. For where Slough were, like 20, 30 years ago, obviously before my time, like we were, we were, in, we were in the trouble, like we were in trouble, but now we're an established National League South side and we're doing pretty well. We are aware here at Bunch of Amateurs that we spend a fair amount of time talking to the away fans and rarely do we catch up with the locals. So today we decided to make sure Dorking's fans got a shot. Hi mate, my name's Danny, I'm the Vice Chairman and Parent Liaison Officer of the Youth Section. Hi, my name's Lorraine and I'm volunteering here today. And got into this as a fan, Dean, the Assistant Manager, my son and his son play together. So I started running that team and it's kind of just, like everyone, falling in line. I've been doing it since January. Okay, and um, you're a football fan? Uh, I am now, I wasn't. Um, both my partner and my son are season ticket holders here, so they're here, so I thought I'd come along too. You, you're so much closer to everything, aren't you? The management, the players, you know, the, the, the people around you, supporters as, as it's growing. Whereas I suppose in a professional club, you're just, uh, you're just a pawn on the board who's not really involved, doesn't really have a voice, whereas down here you can have an opinion. And, you know, a club like this, they let you get involved. So mainly I do the turnstiles, and then during the game I just tend to walk around, make sure everyone's OK. Is it fun? Yeah, I love it, really getting into it. Do you get any trouble? Uh, personally, no. It seems to me that the crowd to see are remarkably well behaved. Or they are, crowd. yeah. Everyone's, it's a good laugh. We're going we're gonna to do a proper job. 5-0 I'm going to go for. I'm going big today. 5-0 I do. Uh, the most interesting part of my day is just meeting all different people. I love it, uh, you know, from the old boys down to the, the youngsters that come in. I love it. Along with Max the Rascal Roscoe, there's another YouTube channel here today, Location Football, brought to you by Scott Lavelle and James Kirtland, a.k.a. Curly from Soccer AM. So Location Football started um, during the pandemic. A bit like yourself, we would come up with some ideas. We had a blank bit of paper. Me and Scott were wondering, what could we do to give back to the football community? Came up with travel and football, and then started with our local teams, Bishop Stortford, Hemel Hempstead, Sawbridgeworth. Um, and then we created this sort of 10 minute piece that's got loads of different elements to it, about the crest, about the kits. Basically taking what we learned from Soccer AM and then just chucking it into non-league football. What brings you down to Dorking today? Oof, well, your work, really. I think <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, you. the amount of extra eyes that you've been able to put on this club 
is incredible and I think you've created a real hype around it. So we didn't really have a choice. You've made it so that we want to become, we want to come down here because of, yeah, the hype you've been able to create around this club. But it is quite an inviting club, isn't it? Oh, it's a nice it's incredible. place to be. It is, exactly. Like, look at the stadium around you here. It's like we've done a lot of Ithmian League and Southern League clubs. Uh, the stadiums are great. And then you come up to National League South and there's just that Levels. little next step. And the characters as well, the people like Mark, um, that you highlight brilliantly in your pieces, all the behind the scenes stuff. It's very engaging and um, we, we just love it. So that's why we've come down here today to meet the people and uh, yeah, see some really good football. We try to tell the story around the game, really. We know that there's many clubs, they're always, they usually film their games. And basically, the, the irony of it all is the, uh, the actual football for us is sort of like the last bit that we sort of forget about because we're doing everything else around the club. What happens on the pitch is just, the, the, uh, it just happens and we sort of, I say it's the least important, but it's not what we're here for exactly like all the goals and stuff. It's the people, it's the it's the story, it's the history, it's the, the ambition of the clubs and sort of giving that feel that we want other people now to come down to, to Dorking and experience what we're experiencing today. It's the social element and I think having social media around these days, well, particularly for us two with YouTube channels, but I think for clubs, it, it's just going to only get bigger and bigger, I think. Where? You right there. You can see it at the back there. Remember it, Turk? I remember, but I can't see it. What, the one with Macron on the front? Yeah. Right, now it all makes sense. He is good in the air. Yeah, he's good He scored a goal yeah. that day yeah, from a corner. Woken one. Yes. Yeah, they aimed him because everyone thought he won't get it because he's Fuck. small. Now, no Why didn't you tell us that? Lucky that I'm here, Tom. Well, you've only just told us. They've done already done set of pieces. <laughs> I just seen him. I just told you that a minute ago. I told you that yesterday. I think being compact with their full press is important because we just don't just don't give teams a goal down here. And I don't want to get that in my head either, but that's when it happens. They're a 4 3 3. It's a full press. And at the back, we go around the edges early. Early. Isaac, Bobby, if they're a full press, don't pass back into that unless you are fucked. I'd rather it just goes into the Maca 10, yeah. into Alfie 9, into the winner's feet. Don't play back into it unless we have to. All right, boys? Okay, the number three, I'm just saying, I've seen him play before, and he's unbelievable in the air. Yeah. Which is obviously why they do that tactic of sending him down the wind. Right, he's small. But at corners, I've, watched, I've seen him score a corner at Woking before for Willstone. He's spring heels, right? So you'll be marking him. Yeah. Don't wait for the game to start. Don't wait. Okay, you're the home team, and you're a fucking unbelievable team. Okay, start this game. We've had a long season, boys, yeah? We've had a long season. It's that relentless mindset, right? Don't be sucked into thinking, oh, we've got lots of ball, oh, we're going to win this game, we'll do our pieces. You've got to play at your intensity. You've got to take them apart, boys, all right? Final thing, I think if they are a full press, used to need to be conservative. Because this is all about not conceding, okay? If they're a full press. So for me, if they're a full press, Mac will be the magic man. He'll come in deep and get it down. When you're looking, you're looking for Mac up. Yeah. Right? He's going to come in. All right? That's what you're looking for. Okay, boys, don't wait to start the game. You start the game, okay? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You may have noticed by now that there are some issues with the audio. It seems somebody decided to play around with their microphone and it stopped working. Still, if ever there was a good day for this to happen, it's this day. For Mark is on a touchline ban, having had some choice words with former England manager Peter Taylor back when Welling visited Meadowbank. Right. Can you put that in words that you're going to let me use in six weeks' no, time? I had a case with Peter Taylor, and um, so, so I got a one match ban, which I thought was really. This is actually the best level of ban I've ever had. Just one touchline ban, so we can roll with that. So, where does that mean you're standing today? Well, right next to the dugout, really, as near as I can. Not allowed to coach, but that's fine. So we'll be fine. You're not allowed to coach? I don't think so. Regrettably, we weren't there to hear Mark recommend a good bingo hall for his ageing counterpart, but it does mean Mr White has to stand on the other side of the fence and say nothing, which he obviously does. He remains totally silent and does not get involved, and you cannot prove otherwise using our footage. Without wishing to get too self-referential here, another issue we face is Dorking's tendency to make stuff happen in the first minute of a match, before we can set up the GoPros. And once again that issue arises, as Jimmy Mewitt tries his luck from the edge of the box, much to Dino's confusion. Yeah! What the fuck happened there? 40 seconds 
seconds. What happened there? I didn't even see that. No! No! In his defence, the reason Dino missed the goal was down to his diligent attempts to decipher the opposition's formation, as he and coach Carl are wont to do at the start of every match. I haven't got any numbers yet. I've got one, two numbers. Yeah, what number's he? Seven? Is it four, two, three, one? Whatever formation Slough are playing, the high press is effective. Dorking aren't having much fun getting the ball out from the back, and without Mark shouting instructions from the sideline, <clears throat> the pressure is on Beardy and company to get the instructions across. Bobby! Simple! This way, not Finn! Touchline! No! Touchline! Dorking are certainly patient, almost as patient as John the Bible is, when it comes to taking calls from Dino to help him figure out the opposition system. It's like 4 2 3 1. Eyes up, open your body. Something Mark is adamant about is that his players don't feign injury, which might explain why, on this odd occasion, Wes Fogden's performance elicits memories of Julian Sands in arachnophobia. It's fair to say our references might need updating. Fogden inexplicably recovers and has a great view of Josh Tader's latest chaos-causing long throw. Sean Fraser's attempted clearance cannons off of George Hunt, giving Isaac Philpot the chance to ram home a second after just nine minutes. Hey, fucking different class, you. Keep it going. The switch from side to side is, is on all the time, yeah? Despite the bad start, Slough are not averse to going forwards. Aaron Kuehl sells Bobby Joe a dummy like he's a mother care salesman, and Curtis Cumberbatch eventually rockets a shot on Dan Lincoln's goal, or technically, the stand behind Dan Lincoln's goal. Just as they give themselves something to believe in, Slough shoot themselves in the foot with far better accuracy than when they're shooting at goal. Edon Pruti's back pass goes straight to Alfie Rutherford and he teases out goalkeeper Jonathan North for a stone bonker of a penalty shout. Oh my God. Luke Moore has a chance to put the game to bed on the half hour mark, but he drags his penalty wide of the post. We don't score penalties, we might as well give the ball back. That's effectively what they do. Lee Togwell says thanks and drives a shot on goal that we're quite sure Dan Lincoln got a glove to. Minutes before half time, Jimmy Mewitz has the chance to end the half just as he started it. Is it the Salachi sign? That's 10 foot wide. There's now just enough time left for Slough to create their best opening of the half. Second! That's him. George Hunt slots the ball past the two Dans, but his effort bounces off the post like Paul Walker showing off in a Porsche. I'm so, so sorry. I, I, once I had that in my head, I couldn't think of another one. Right, good stuff. Um, I don't want to hear any little bitch in the back. Okay, I'll put myself in goal. Or I'll put myself in centre half. Because these things manifest. They manifest the wrong way. When something's done, do all it like men. Say, do me a favour, next time can you do that? And then we all take it and we move on. We don't hold on to baggage, okay? I'm going to hear that shit. I actually think it'd be unfair for me to pick holes in anything. The only things they've done, I mean, fuck me, in 45 minutes, they're going to get a spare man on the ball at some point. I want you to understand, we've got to take care of business here. We'll just tick this one off. Okay, this is just about being really strong. I think we defended their dead balls brilliantly. They're trying to get three on the ball the whole time, aren't they? All the time. Your second phase defending more though has been fucking brilliant. Let's hear you on a massive fucking calls at times when we can, okay? Now, bringing on uh, Harris, the striker, Ben Harris, number nine. <coughs> so, 
there's a chance you might be reverting to a diamond. Okay, because I don't think the other lad up top doing so bad. Right? So, but the bottom line is they're bringing on a striker. So that means they're going to be either 4 4 2, but it'd probably be a 4 diamond 2. So that's when we do everything we said before the game. Yeah, that's what we do. So we've got to keep at it. It's a really good first half, boys. They're a full press. It's a full press game. We're winning the battles, which is why we're on the ball. So very, very good. Okay, very, very good. Keep passing forward. And don't forget the communication. If they do have runners at times, make sure you're opening out, you know, you're doing everything right, okay? Right, another half like that. We're going to our fans now. One more goal. This game is as dead, right, as the door now. One goal, okay? And we look so good in the last third. So if you boys at the back can just keep defending first, put up that kill when you run up the touchline and you dummy, ball's there. Win the ball. Defend first at the back like you have, Love to see you shoving them about, love it. Defend first, right? The midfielders are winning the seconds. They're doing that for you. And when we get it down, get it out wide, get it in the space. And we're going to win the game. We'll kill the game off, okay? Right, same aggression. Go on, guys. Thank you very much, guys. Make it from the cliff. Um, so there's, uh, there's only going to be, there's only natural changes in this game. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to go, um, you know, if Moya scores that, we go to a back four, you know, just and then we give ourselves an overload. So if they score one goal, then we'll be going to a back four, and we'll just have to suck it up. We could have won two games by now. That's the bottom line with the chance to be bad. But we're going to get loads more chances. Because also, you know, for me, the balance of possession means they're going to be blowing the second half. They're going to be, it's one of them games where I can see them, but they're going to start to blow. So, no, it's all really good to be fair, but just make sure, being with the, from the side there, Get them set, then relax them, then calm them for five. Um, one point, they're looking over their shoulders and trying to run them for a game. It's a full press game. Yeah. Jimmy is full back, Nile the full back. You know, it's a full press game. Do your jobs right, we're good to go. Thus far, it's been a rather uninspired performance from a slough team in a rather uninspired kit. They should have gone to fcfootballkit.com and they just happen to be our new sponsor. Check them out in the description if you're interested in getting a bespoke, fully sublimated kit that will save you a lot of time and money and hassle. Forgive us for the shameless plug, but they're great guys with a really good products that we really do recommend. So that's it for now. That's it. We won't do any more plugging. As usual, we're setting up the GoPros for the second half, which means the Wanderers will do their absolute best to score a goal before we can get back to sideline camera duties. And that is exactly why camera B was left pointing in the direction of the Slough goal. I can't believe I'm about to say this one. Not since I went back to Carolyn Wilkinson's house after school have I been so excited by a first touch. The explosive finish that followed was eerily reminiscent to... <laughs> Jimmy, get the next one to And the third goal for Dr. Wallace. That's a hell of a strike coming, eh? Fucking hell. All right, Jim, mate. If Dorking are starting quickly, then Slower starting equally as slowly. Take him on, Jimmy! Get out of his way, Josh. Yeah! yeah! Fucking love that, Alf! Gonna... Do it now. Josh Taylor drives forwards, giving Mewitt and Fogden a chance to play in Alfie Rutherford. He scores his 156th goal of the season, probably. Slower convinced it was offside and they berate the referee and Lino, but we're pretty sure they got this one right. Just shy of three months prior to this match, star striker Jason Pryor broke his collarbone in the game against Dulwich Hamlet. His absence may have been costly, but his return could be huge. Runners! Oh, 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 oh,
Paul B! Just stop Paul Black! Bob, stop Paul Black! Just support him! Well done. Now that's overlapping. We're just going to put it on the other one. Get in now, mate. Get in there. Oh, 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 Look at Jace. Look at Jace. He's got nah, nah, nah. Into the goal. James McShane's dipping drive is spilled by Jonathan North, and thus it took just two minutes for Dorking's target man to find the net like a latter day David Nugent. <laughs> Now, we've thought long and hard about how to deal with the subsequent 35 minutes. Making you sit through what turned into a remarkably boring afternoon watching people do very little would be akin to spending an evening with Barry Glenn Denning. What we can do is show you this brief compilation of half chances, where Wes Fogden hits the bar from a deflected volley, Niall McManus has a shot blocked, and a rusty Jason Pryor can't quite get on the end of a cross. Oh, what a ball that is, by the way. I'd have, I'd have bicycled that. It's another three points in the bag for Dorking, but with Maidstone beating hapless Havants 4 0, the four point gap remains. For 35 minutes, we were 5 0 up and 35 to play. So I think if you're being, if you're being realistic and you're being a winner, you'd be a little bit disappointed with 35 and 5 to play, to be quite honest with okay? you. Especially when goal difference. You know, like when you have those situations, you, I'm, not, I'm not saying, I don't think you weren't chasing goals. But I thought decision making went a little bit 5 0 decision making, carrying the ball, not passing it, stuff like that. Yeah, but you know, if you're at Hungerford last day, and you've got the draw and the win, that's a massive difference. And if you've got the goal difference, that is what you'll have. Listen, I think the story of that game is, we didn't give him a sniff. I thought, Dan, the back three were excellent, and Lincoln. I think most of all, it was a full press game. And when it's a full press game, you sometimes just need your players to be better than theirs. And the midfield three ran the game first half. So we were getting on the ball, and then the minute we're on the ball as a team, I've told you before, you can set up as many sessions as you want in terms of attacking pattern, but no one creates as many chances as us, it's a fucking joke. So we created loads of chances. That game honestly could have been oh, double figures, that game. That could have been worse than Havertz. <coughs> Across the 90, there's a fucking penalty miss in there. There's all sorts in there. But it was excellent, boys. Really, really good. But we've, got, we've still got to keep working our seat. I told you when we played Hampton and uh, what's the other lot we played last week? Exfleet. For me, it, you're never wrong when you judge on performances. You know, if you see performances there, you know you'll go and get one of those wins like that today. We're just too good, just too good. But what you can't do because it works the other way round. So what happens is you win shit one nil, you win shit two one, and then it catches up with you. Then you, that's how it works. So it's important to keep your form. Keep your form, boys. That's what you've got to do now. All right, lads. So we're now mentally preparing for two games over that weekend and a friendly Tuesday, which on a decent pitch would be a really good exercise, OK? Much better than training. All right? 5 nil is fucking excellent. Well done. Get it all in, lads. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, 5 nil up, 30, 35 to play will be the, the, the negative out of today, really. But we kind of made our own choices, though. We took off players that we thought had a few little knocks they were carrying. Josh Taylor's had a bit of a, a knee that's been swelling up a little bit. So we made that choice. But yeah, we, 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 we sort of played it a little bit like we're 5 nil up. Can I score a goal as opposed to can we score a goal? And 
you know, so, so that'll be the only thing. But the minute you start bemoaning five nils is the minute that things go against you. Yeah, it was, I've had a bit of a stop start season injury wise. It's been a, it's not been good really. And then when I'd done it at Dulwich, that was around the time I'd, you know, I'd, I was back to full fitness, I felt playing well. And uh, yeah, to do, to, you know, to get an injury that serious is an absolute killer because then you know straight away how long you're out for. At least with the little niggly ones, you think you might be back in a couple of weeks and maybe you're not, but you know, it's, it was just a bit of a killer. And then you know when you get back, <coughs> you've then got to do all the fitness work and stuff. So, but you know, it's part of the job, isn't it? I was at Worthing. Uh, I just go along first just to get some games and some goals. And then I think, because the gaffer used to come quarry last year when every other league was obviously shot because of lockdown. He used to come as a crawley and he said to me like, after a few games with Warren, would you want to come and play for us? Like, we're in a title race, obviously. I looked at the league, which to be fair, I was looking before as well, I always keep an eye on every league. And then it was just a no brainer saying yes for me, just to test myself in this league as well, because obviously it's sort of similar to football league as well. There's some tough games. Um, there's some tough games to play. And it's, all, it's obviously all about how you react to it, 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 that time of the year. How do you react if things go against you? Because if, one, if there's one result reversal, then if you've got the goal difference, technically you, you, you know, you've got the draw and a, and a win to win the, win the division, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, so, but that, listen, Equally, Maystone might be five points clear with two to play or one to play. We might be, you just don't know. Dartford, Ebsfleet had a, had a great day today, but they might come back into it. I think you can only ever do your own thing and then let the rest take care of itself. I was playing in, uh, football in Italy and Switzerland, but I, I didn't really get given much value as a player. I, I got told I was too small and not strong enough. And, I, and then, then all of a sudden I just grew and uh, Obviously, my first aim was to learn English because obviously it's an international language, which I could use for any job in the future and stuff like that. But obviously, my main focus was always football. So, and, but I know in England there is a lot of like uh, coaches give value to young players and they put them on as well. So they trust them. Where in Italy, you don't get that much. They play a distinctive formation, mostly a diamond, but they much similar to a lot of other teams. They changed it. Um, to just a more defensive shape, really, and uh, competed man for man. They went to a diamond uh, the latter part of the game and put on some boys that ran about a lot more and, and looked a bit better, to be fair. Um, they're a club not in the... The managers there, really, uh, Neil and John, no disrespect to them and their fans, really hold up that club. It's not a club with the infrastructure. I mean, we've, we're down here today, volunteers and people behind this club, we must have 30 people. And... Um, so we are in a different place to where they are right now. I think they're one of the only teams in this division borderline plan for nothing. So our attitude would need to be, it was a game that we should have won and, and did win. And we won't really look into it any more than that. When I was younger, say when I was at Bognor and I was scoring a few, then you, I, th I really did feel the pressure then. And you kind of, you don't know how to deal with it. And if you, if you fall out of form or fall out of the goals, then it can really get on top of you. But I think at my age, Without blowing my, trump, my own trumpet, I've scored fairly consistently, and obviously I'm 33 now. So if I if I have a little drought, I still feel like I can bring other stuff to the team. So I, I, I'm sort of I think it's just where I'm used to the pressure now. It doesn't I don't I don't feel sort of the effects of it too much. So, so I fucking played 30 minutes. I saw snow, rain, <laughs> wind, well, sun. Yeah, yeah, oh my god, honestly. <laughs> Lucky I kept my underarm, I was freezing. Are you, um, are you a full-time footballer? Yeah. So you're a full-time footballer, but you, so you're the only full-timer in this Yeah, team, yeah, I think so, yeah. So how does that work for you? What are you doing during the week then, when they're all at work? Uh, well, I train, I do double sessions, Tuesdays and Thursdays. We call in the morning, unless they have a game, and in the evening we're dorking. If not, um, me and my two other mates, we just opened like a, like a little business online. So we just work, it's like a selling online, co um, online programs and stuff. Okay. Yeah, it's called Players Lounge. Basically, we're just showing what we've done to get where we are now and obviously keep pushing on and stuff. But if not, I just, I play Warzone as well a lot. <laughs> PlayStation, <laughs> yeah. I really play a lot, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. 
Well, I think the way obviously it's flipped in the last couple of weeks, position-wise, that's a made stone. And I think when when that happens and you're chasing, I think that's all you can do. You've got to just reset, um, take a positive mindset into every game, <clears throat> and uh, essentially you've got nothing to lose. They're the ones that are always looking over their shoulder. Um, so I think yeah, that's all we can do. We just got to keep playing our our football. Hope hope the, the results come, and then just we're just waiting on Maidstone to see if they can hold their nerve. So I don't think there's any point in getting too bogged down in it because at the end of the day, it's out of your hands to an extent. You just got to you keep doing all we can do. I think we've been guilty of getting drawn into the hype. You know, it's it's hard not to. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are. We won 10 straight games and uh, we probably weren't as relaxed at that point as we were halfway through that run. And you start looking at tables, it's hard not to. And it's, it's hard, you know, obviously you're always looking for, <coughs> I look online a lot so I'm, because I'm looking for information on clubs and players and situations. And, you know, then you read X, Y, Z. And realistically, the only place you can win the division is on the pitch every Saturday, every Tuesday, and you can't look at anything else, really. And that's where we are now, we're in a good place. We're going to give it our all, and if our all's not good enough, then we'll shake hands. Thanks for watching Bunch of Amateurs. We hope you don't mind us plugging our new sponsor. We went with fcfootballkit.com because we genuinely do like their business and we want to see them succeed. So check them out if you're in the markets for a new kit next season. This week's comment of the week comes from Ben Ryan, who said, I can't believe I met you playing pro clubs. Ben, we'd love to have time to play more FIFA, maybe in the summer.